Welcome to Small Business Big Dreams, where every episode is a new journey into the world of entrepreneurs who are daring to dream big. In this corner of the internet, we're going to celebrate the innovation and the perseverance it takes to turn small ventures into booming successes. These small businesses aren't just places to shop, they're actually hubs of creativity and passion, each with its own amazing story. From the mom and pop shops to the innovative startups, we're going to explore it all. You'll meet the faces behind the brands, hear their stories, and maybe even get inspired to start your own venture. Whether you're a longtime local or new in town, come along with me for the ride and let's celebrate the backbone of our communities one small business at a time. Now let's dream big and spread some love for our local heroes. All right, well, welcome back to another week of Small Business Big Dreams. And you guys, this episode this week, you might love it, you might actually hate it. Most people don't enjoy doing it, but I am sitting down with a good new friend of mine, Dr. Maggie Grothy, who is a dentist uh, who's opening up her own spot out in Algonquin, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm, uh, I, so I can't believe I'm going to admit this. Well, I'm, I have no problem admitting. I love actually going to the dentist. I love having my teeth cleaned. I know a lot of people don't. So it's going to be an interesting how people react to this episode today. Um, but give us the elevator pitch of Maggie. What, who are you and what do you do? Yeah. So, um, I'm a dentist, like you said, I grew up in the, the Barrington area, so Northwest suburbs of Chicago. Um, and yeah, I've decided to open up my own practice in Algonquin. I was in, I have been an associate for uh, about three and a half years now and just decided that there were a lot of things that, I wanted to do a different way and wanted to do better. So decided to open up my own practice. Love that. I, I think um, always, like no matter what people industry they may be in, I always feel like they work in that industry and realize like there's something different. They want to do differently. They believe differently. Something they think is being done wrong or could be done better. And they're like, screw this. I'm just going to go do it myself. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, have you always wanted to be a dentist? Oh, no. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. There's yeah. a story there. All right. <laughs> so up until I was a senior in high school, I wanted to be a country singer. No shit. Yeah. I was like determined. I tried out for X Factor and like, like tried to get all these gigs and everything, like going around with my little guitar. And yeah. Yeah. And then I took a human physiology class my senior year of high school and like fell in love with physiology and the human body and like even like the urinary system. I was like, this is amazing. Like the human body is incredible. Yeah. And then eventually I was pre-med for a while and then found dentistry and just kind of fell in love with it. So yeah. Figure that talk about a left turn, you know, like creative, like artsy side Mm -hmm. to like, nope, medical science going done. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. But actually dentistry is a, is a combination of art and science the way I see it just because it's so manual and there's so much like, honestly just art involved in the mouth which you know a lot of people don't realize but yeah oh give it okay give us an example what do you mean so well for example i love doing cosmetic dentistry so full mouth full Mm. smile you know makeovers and really turning um someone's smile into into what they want and there's it's very artistic the colors the shapes every i mean to an extent, but <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> you know, but but make it look natural exactly, and all. Yeah, exactly. Of yes. So it's very artistic and meticulous and, and detailed. So that's the part that I love. One of the parts that I love. Um, well, very cool. So I want to talk about the amount of education you had to go through, right? I feel like I've been in school for <laughs> ever. <laughs> Walk us been. through that. What does that look like? Yeah. So after high school, um, did four years of undergrad at the University of Iowa, go Hawks. And then um, I was I was lucky enough to be able to just go right into dental school. Um, some people take time off and work as an assistant or um, <clears throat> go to a master's program or just kind of take some time off. But I went right into dental school. That's four years. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> eight years of post high school education and then... There's an optional residency that some people take or they specialize, but I'm a general dentist. So I started working right away. Um, One of the reasons I didn't feel the need to take an optional residency is because the dental school I went to, Mm. there is no residency. So um, every patient that walks through the door, we get to treat them. So I did surgical extractions. I did molar root canals, um, a lot of different types of procedures as a dental student. Um, so once I was done with that, I was like, all right, let's go. You know I'm, I'm feeling it, ready let's, for yeah, it. Hit the yeah. ground running. Let's yeah. go. I love mm-hmm. that. 
Um, did you go to dental school local or? Yes, I went to Midwestern University in the western suburbs of Chicago. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so now you, have you been, you see so been now an associate for how many years? You said three? Three and a yeah, half. Three and yes. a half. Where mm-hmm. are you doing that out of? So I am currently at a couple different offices. Okay. Right after graduation, my husband and I moved to Cleveland, Ohio for his job. <laughs> okay. Um, and then once we had our second daughter, we moved back to be by family and We knew that I wanted to open my own practice, so we decided we wanted to set down roots in the suburbs of Chicago, so we moved back in February. Uh, was that a pun in there I heard potentially? Was it? Uh, <laughs> set up roots. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Come on. It's... I'm sorry. <laughs> so one thing, I, I don't even think we've actually mentioned it yet, is like the, the name of your practice, you're yeah. calling it Root Dental, correct? Correct, yeah. yes. Um, and I think there's so many like, I'll let you. So there's got to be a, more of a story, right? Other there than the is, obvious, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So the idea behind Root Dental is root cause. Mm. So, um, well, there's actually a couple things. Root cause, meaning... I look for the root cause of issues. So for example, someone walks in with a cracked tooth and the idea is, you know, well, you have a cracked tooth, let's put a crown on it. That's actually treating a symptom. That's not treating the issue. The issue is why did that tooth crack? Teeth don't crack naturally. Like an almond can't break a tooth. A tooth is very strong. So what is going on that caused that cracked tooth? Let's look for that. Is it sleep apnea? Is it, um, you know, other issues break down? So looking at, comprehensive health and looking at what the issue is and treating the issue, not just the symptom. So that was one part of it. The other part of it is, um, you know, just kind of the organic earthy feel of root, right? Um, so I'm really passionate about holistic health and holistic dentistry, meaning, you know, there is definitely a place for medication in our society, but I think it's way overused. Oh, hundred percent. You know, I'm in that same boat with yes, you. and looking to nutrition and mm-hmm. you know overall health, and you know, I've even started looking into like essential oils, and you know, I follow this account on Instagram that I think is really cool. Um, so just using like the power of our body and strengthening our body to in order to help it treat itself, um, and not just leaning on medications. So I'm really passionate about that as well. So am I going to be a very assumptive to think this is part of the reason why you wanted to establish your own dentistry or is it just part of your career path as well? Um, that was a big push. So one of the reasons I that I wanted to establish my own practice is because in, and I've worked in seven different offices now wow. and I didn't feel like in any sort of, and they were all, they all have been different and with the exception of one, which is a pediatric office that I work at right now, which I absolutely love, um, that would be the exception. But all the others, I didn't feel like they were doing the kind of dentistry that I wanted to do. Mm. And that would be where you sit down and you really get to know the patient and you get to know what the patient wants and you do comprehensive dentistry and not just patchwork. Like a lot of dental offices and it's okay for, it's just a different style. Yeah. Patchwork dentistry. And that's just not what I do. Okay. And you know, being in an office where I set the pace and I can control the systems in place, I can do the kind of dentistry that's holistic and comprehensive and really treats the whole person and not just their mouth. So I have a, a thing that's always bothered me when I've gone and seen the dentist is that actually I spend all my time with the assistants. I apologize. Mm-hmm. I don't actually don't know their titles, but like yeah, the actual yeah. dentist like sure. comes in at the last second, like Asked me, any issues? Uh, no. Okay, see you later. I was like, oh, all right. Exactly. They, like, thanks. Like, yes. okay. As you move through exactly. it. Yeah, it's like, you know, and don't get me wrong. The assistants are great. They, you know, they spend their time. They do their thing. Yeah. But it's just like, so then I'm like, what does the dentist do? Exactly. You know? like, that's And that's one of the, the things that I don't, that I haven't liked is, you know, I was actually at an office that I was at recently. Um, I was scolded because I took too much time to like diagnose. (laughs) Like I was in there for doing a hygiene check, like the hygienist does the cleaning and I go in and check and I was in there talking about the patient's issues and their symptoms and looking at everything and trying to, you know, get the full picture. And I was scolded saying like, you know, you're, you're taking too much time. I was in there for like seven minutes and I was like, this is ridiculous. (laughs) This is ridiculous. So yeah. So I, I want to sit down with the patients. I want like in my office, I will, I will start. It's not going to start in the operatory. 
a new patient will not start in the arbitrary. They're going to start in my office. Okay. I'm going to offer them coffee. We're going to talk. I'm going to get to know them. I want to know who their family is. I want to know what they like to do. And then we'll talk about dentistry and we'll talk about why they're there and what they want. Not, oh, here's what I see and this is what you need. Yeah. What do you want? Why did you come to me? You know, how can I help you? And that's where it will start. And I feel like that's where it should start is treating the person, not their mouth. All right. So this is the cynical shoulder of me that's going to yes. ask you uh, the devil's advocate question. So I know like uh, doctors, like uh, like mm-hmm. general practitioners yeah. that have had very similar mindsets mm-hmm. and they start their practice that way. But unfortunately, the way insurance works is really force their hand. Mm-hmm. Is that, do you see that potentially being an issue, you know, having, cause like for them, it was, they were telling me it was like, they had to see so many patients to actually make mm-hmm. any money to like, cause obviously you've got debt, you've got mm-hmm. your insurance costs. I heard are like asinine, yeah. um, you know, and it's like, well, okay. So yeah, I have to go see a patient every five minutes or I'm never going to mm-hmm. like make any money. Is that like going to hinder your process of wanting to do this this way? So I will start by saying you are absolutely right. And that's how it works in the insurance world. 100%. The insurance world is in a any, Oh, it's the worst. I hate mm-hmm. it. In any dental office. And again, I've worked in a lot of dental offices. I've shadowed in a lot of dental offices. In any office that takes a lot of insurance, that is how it will be. I don't care what they tell you. That is yeah. how it will be. The reimbursement rates are so low They're that garbage. in order to keep the doors open to pay the staff and turn on the lights. You have to see more patients Mm -hmm. and therefore you don't get as much time with them. Period. I don't care what anyone says. That's why I'm not going to be in network with insurance. Oh shit. Hot take. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) And I'm going to tell you exactly why for that reason, because I want to spend time with my patients. Right. I want to give them the treatment they deserve. And I want to look for root cause symptoms and not, you need a filling, you have a cavity, you need a filling, here we go, we're done. Okay. No, why did you get a, why did you get a filling? Or why did you get a cavity? What, what do we need to change? Let's figure it out. And I'm not going to be a drill and fill dentist. There are <laughs> a lot out there and that's okay. And some yeah. patients, you know, not everyone is going to want to be my patient. And I totally understand that. And, that's and okay. yeah, yes. and everyone has a different style that they like, but if that's the style that someone likes, they should go to corporate dentistry. They should go to high, heavy insurance practices, and that's their dental home, and that is completely okay. That's not what I'm going to do at my practice. Well, I want to give better treatment sucks than that. Anyway, from even like a uh, like the patient side of it. Yes. It's yeah, quote unquote. It's cheap, but mm-hmm. you're giving me shit coverage anyway. Exactly. And it's like I can't. I've actually looked for like a premium insurance coverage so I can, and it basically doesn't exist. No. Yeah. And so a little background, my husband, Ben, he um, works for the Cleveland Clinic and his job there, what he does for a living is he creates, um, helps create in network or in-house insurance plans for the Cleveland Clinic so that they don't have to work through third party insurance, but they, they rather work directly with employers. So he's created an in-house insurance plan for our patients that is either the same cost wise or better than most um like ppo insurance plans well, so well, you'll you'll be signing me up by the end of this podcast. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah it's worth the drive i like i said i love going to the dentist yeah. it's just such a pain in the ass yeah it's it is such, it's like um i fortunately work for a company like dentals included i'm mm-hmm. like i've looked it up it's like five bucks a month like yeah you know it's like and it's like and then it cuts you off at to like five hundred dollars seriously anyway. it's, just it's just such, such a, a joke. and they dictate treatment which i don't like either insurance well, all, all companies insurance. it's like you're not a doctor exactly like, it's like, what the hell yeah like, i went yeah. through a lot of this with um when my uncle was sick and it was mm-hmm. like oh well actually we want him on this med first it's like well the doctor said it's like exactly but oh, our mm-hmm. data shows it's like shut yeah. up and oh, patients deserve better they really do they yeah. deserve better than that every everywhere all of it you yes. know but um whoo Hot, hot topic <laughs> right out the bat Damn today right right? Yeah, we're, 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 we're starting this morning strong yes. um so back to you. Yeah. So um, where are, so 
couple different shops you've worked or offices, excuse yeah. me, you've worked at. Um, and so now you're opening your own. Mm-hmm. Where is it located? It's in downtown Algonquin. So the address is one main street. So it's literally oh, right wow, in the heart. That, you couldn't have gotten a better <laughs> right address. In the heart. So easy. Wow. <laughs> yes. God, it's like out of a movie. I know. <laughs> okay. And downtown Algonquin's beautiful. So I cute. love it down there. Yes. yes. So cute. Mm-hmm. Um, when is it? Because you're under construction right now, right? Mm-hmm. As yeah. of what day are we? Oh, this is September the 11th. second or yeah. third week. Yeah. 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 Hot. Ooh, rough morning. Um, yeah. So you're second or third week in construction, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. And when's the, hopefully the open date? December 26th. Christmas. So after Christmas. If, you, okay. if you break your tooth on, on Christmas and your dentist isn't open, I'll be open. You can come see me. All right. Well, <laughs> save me an appointment. I'm going to yeah. come see you. <laughs> yeah. Not for a cracked tooth because I just yes. want a good cleaning. Let's I'd be go. happy yeah. to All see right. you. <laughs> um, so December. Okay. So what... Other, so other than construction, mm-hmm. which is always a fun process, yeah. there there's a lot of, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of fun in it because yeah. you're building from <laughs> like scratch, right? Basically. Yeah. It's there's no plumbing, no electrical. There's oh, not even money. a floor. I mean, it's literally nothing. So it's um, almost essentially. Is it a new up. building? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's that Renew building. Oh my God. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and you're, so you get to pick out all the like details though. Oh, and, it, like, it's Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i down to the doorknobs literally like the the yeah everything i've i've been really particular and detailed and no way there's thought behind everything everything yeah so like for example all of the i was very particular about all of the operatories have doors on them because i want that sound privacy for patients so that you don't hear what's going on the next operatory and the screaming in the other room no that's not the point (laughs) No, so if, you know, someone's feeling self-conscious and they don't want someone to hear what's going on in their mouth, they have that privacy. But that being said, they're all glass. So patients, you know, I'm coming at it from the perspective of a young female patient that I want to feel safe in a dental office and I want, you know, to have my privacy, but also feel comfortable. And, you know, I think that part of it is, you know, having that glass door is you have privacy, but also like you don't feel like you're boxed in and that someone can see what's going on if, you know to add, add a level of comfort um is there going to be anything in the office that's kind of like new or cutting edge or like something worth like bragging about um everything oh, oh okay yes. so um i'm hopefully getting a cbct which is a 3d x-ray um that can x-ray. really help with diagnosis so if someone comes in um and they have a problem i can see if there's a crack in the tooth or an abscess or something that gives me a 3d representation of their skull um so i'm working on that hopefully we'll have that when we open but those are really expensive so we'll see (laughs) (laughs) um but i'm gonna have a i will definitely have a digital scanner so no more goopy impressions um all of it will be digital scanning that'll be sent um, electronically to the dental labs um in addition to that let's see what else what else um, I mean, I'm trying to make it as, as modern and, and new as possible. So digital x-rays, of course, um, all handheld x-rays units. So you don't have that big bulky thing coming out of the wall. Um, yeah, just as clean and, <laughs> and new as, as it can get. Love it. Yeah. I, I, I honestly love the sterileness and clean cleanliness oh, of yeah. a dentist office. It's just like. Just, oh, and I'm it. I'm so OCD, so it's it has to look immaculate I'm gonna come all in the and time. Mud all yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that being said, it's not going to feel like a normal dental office. How so? Um, there is going to be greenery everywhere. Okay. I want it to feel like when people walk in, they're walking into a forest. Oh, so wow. greenery everywhere. It's okay. not going to smell like a dental office. There's going to be essential oils, diffusers all over the office, so it doesn't, you know, because there's that mental part of you know scent so we want it to kind of to kind of tickle all the senses right the look the smell the feel everything you thought about everything on this one yes God. so have you started uh hiring staff yet um not formally okay. i've talked to a few people but mm. we'll start actually hiring probably in a few weeks actually i'll probably put some formal ads out so interesting yeah. okay that i would say that's going to be well one that's your most expensive overhead well, yes. maybe insurance maybe. maybe yeah rent maybe i don't yeah. know that. <laughs> but uh staff but it's also one of the hardest things to do that is what i'm most nervous about about this entire process because yeah. i'm so particular and meticulous and i have certain systems that i put in place in order to have things run efficiently and also i want to make sure that my my staff is you know, kind of buying in. And also it's really important to me that my staff feels valued, but also that they 
and that they work very hard, you know, that they have mm-hmm. that efficiency and that, you know, we have a good work ethic and really positive experience. Like I, I want it to be a very positive place. I've yeah. worked in a lot of offices that have terrible culture and that's not what I want for my staff. Like people should feel good when they're going to work. 100%. And I want to make sure that my staff feels that and that they feel valued and they feel respected. Um, so that's really important to me too. Hey, you keep talking that way. You'll definitely find people. I hope you know, so. There's plenty of people that, I mean, I, I could tell you firsthand. So I, my previous employer, I left because of, I mean, it was a toxic culture. Oh, there's so many. Of and them I love the, what the company was doing. Like I love the product. Mm-hmm. I love the opportunity, but it was just like, this is so toxic. Yeah. Like, and that's why 90% of people, why? So my day job, I recruit people out of companies and oh, I can tell yeah. you the easiest thing that is because either a bad boss or a bad culture. Oh, like, absolutely. And it's like beyond that people can do it. Work is work to most people. Right. Mm-hmm. But as long as they don't, you know, feel miserable going there doing it. Yeah. They don't, it, well, I have an interesting story about that actually. Ooh. So the first office that I worked at, um, it was a private practice. It was pretty small. It was me and one other doctor and, it was a culture nightmare. It was absolutely terrible it, to the point where actually um, getting kind of serious here. I was sexually assaulted by one of my patients oh, while I was doing a surgery on that patient and they didn't dismiss the patient. Oh my God. No, what they did was they told me, you know, when you, um, when this patient comes in, we'll tell you and you can run to the back room so you don't have to see him. What? Not kidding. No way. Not kidding. And I actually have also had that experience. I've been, was sexually assaulted as a patient by a doctor. So it is very, very important to me that my staff and the patients have a safe environment. I will never do anything on a patient that they don't know about. They will Mm. never have any, they will never feel like they don't know what's going on. And my staff will feel valued and safe. And that's, that's super important to me because I've been in that situation. Yeah. Not only as uh, a patient, but also as the doctor to have that happen. So Yeah. Yeah. God, I'm sorry. That is brutal on both ends. I mean, that's n- something I wish on nobody. And yeah. it's like, ugh, well, thanks. God. But, you know, you got to take it and, and do oh, something about it in the future. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, turn it into a positive experience for others, hopefully. Yeah. And then, and I think you being comfortable talking about that, knowing mm-hmm. to your staff that you'll protect them. You Absolutely. Know, it's like, yeah. It's, God, go to the back room. Like, what kind yeah. of bullshit? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Oh. Oh man, um, that makes me angry. Um, <laughs> anyway, God, we are just like getting <laughs> heated this morning. Um, anyway, so we, so you're now in the process of building your own place, yes. which is so cool. Mm. Um, I love that for you. But was there a point, like, what made, where did, you, when did you know you were ready to like go and do your own thing? Was it like a breaking point, or is it like you just wanted a certain amount of experience? So, in terms of wanting to own my own practice, it was probably a year and a half ago, but I figured out, I realized I wanted to build my own practice instead of buy one. So I was looking into buying another practice. Oh wait, that's a thing. Yeah. I was looking into acquiring a practice for a dentist who was retiring. Mm. And actually it was about, let's see, nine months ago. So my daughter was two weeks old and (laughs) my second daughter, I have a two year old just turned two and a nine month old. Wait, a two year old, a nine month old, and you're starting your own business. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And I work full time. Um, but wow. other, <laughs> um, so other than that, but um, what I was going to say was she, she was two weeks old. We were back home. My older daughter got RSV and then my baby Whitney, who's two weeks old, was two weeks old at the time. She got RSV. So I, we were at the emergency room. This was in Ohio too. So we didn't have any family around. That was stressful. Um, we went to the emergency room with Whitney and she was, I was stayed there with her. Um, for two days she was admitted, um, to the pediatric hospital, um, just because she was so young. And when we were discharged from the hospital, I got the notice, I got an email that the office that I was going to buy, um, I got, and the papers were signed, the office was bought out by another dentist who paid all cash and they didn't even give me a chance to offer. And I was like, I was at my wits end. I was like, I don't, I'm over this. I'm building my own. I'm not going to be dependent on someone else. So let's do it. And my husband has been so, so, so supportive the entire time. And I cannot say enough good things about him, but he's been a, a really strong support 
um, for this this vision and has kind of led me to this also. Oh, yeah. God. The unsung heroes are partners, man. He With all is. the things He's we take just on. the best, yeah. yeah. Ben, right? Ben, ben. yeah. Uh, shout out, Ben. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm assuming, is Ben watching the kids right now? The kids are a daycare. He's daycare. working. Daycare. Oh, yeah. even better. Okay, all right, <laughs> all right. Um, so uh, about a year and a half ago, you made that decision, doing your own thing. Yep. Uh, wait, timeline. So you've been working th- you started like basically in covid uh after school i was in my 20? i graduated 21 yes oh so covid happened my third year of dental school out of four between three and four years and then came out 21 mm-hmm. and then had to deal like right out the gate like all because 21 it was still pretty like yeah all the regulatory were, stuff was still yeah, at least pretty yeah. hot wow okay mm-hmm. so you you came in right you went through finished school in a hot mess started yeah. in a hot mess yep. oh god then you decided to get married have a couple kids yeah why not you know, you know it's like let's see what else i can just throw <laughs> yeah. into this oh my gosh okay yeah it's like do i just play like the circus music now you know, it's like, <laughs> cue it <laughs> uh yeah i'll have my sound guy do that now I'm just <laughs> um what oh Oh, like, where do I want to go? But there's a lot. I have so many questions. Yeah. I, so I, I actually would have totally could have seen myself being a dentist. Like, yeah, a hundred percent. I would have loved it. Um, I think what scared me off was the amount of education, which yeah. is like, uh, it's like, it's mm, a lot. It, it it's is. Lot. It's, it's, but you need it, but for sure. Um, so we kind of hinted on your, the holistic side of things, right? Mm-hmm. Was, is there, and, and no insurance thing than yes. on the network. That's crazy, which is, yeah. I get Unpopular it. opinion, oh. but with reasons, I mean, right? But the insurance really doesn't cover much anyway. It's so ridiculous. No, and that's the thing is like people think that they're getting a lot from their insurance, but then when you actually crunch the numbers, you're probably paying more um, with insurance than you are without. And you're getting fragmented care. Yeah. Well, def- definitely the latter for sure. Mm-hmm. Now, are you... You can't take any insurance, like even if you wanted to, like if there was no, a, not necessarily. Okay. So we'll we'll help the so the way that we see insurance is it's like a coupon, right? So right. insurance is really a dental coupon because you get you can get refunds and you know get some help with insurance. But you know when patients come to see me, I'll work with their insurance. Um, but you know the but you're above and beyond. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. So I'll work with it, but I won't let it dictate the care that I give them. Good for um, you because it puts them in a box. Yeah. So and it's, and, yeah. it's still, and it's just not how you want to operate. Yeah, so. and they can still use it, um, for sure. But um, do I, can I use HSA? Right, like if I have an HSA oh, absolutely. Kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, there there are a lot of different ways that yeah, you know people can. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Man, oh man, that's so interesting. I'm actually. Is there more people like that in like the dentistry world that like just like F it's starting to go that way? Yeah. There's a lot of offices and a lot of dentists I know who are dropping insurances because of that reason. It dictates care. Well, and the coverage is just it's not so right. garbage anyway. Yes. It's just like, what? The, it's just, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but, but where I was going with that, sorry, yes. the, the insurance thing. I I want to get an insurance person on this podcast, <laughs> and then, but they're going to hate me by yeah. the end of it because I'm just going to tear them <laughs> apart. You know, it's like, oh my God, I hate you. Yeah. You, are, you, you I despise you. That's right. You are the problem. Yeah. So when do you want to come back? <laughs> <laughs> and tune in next yeah. week. You know, um, <laughs> so we were talking about the holistic piece yes. of it, you know, is really, you know, is there anything else like when we think about like dentist to dentist that like sets you apart? Because I know we've talked about some of that, but is there anything yeah. maybe else that the cherry to the Sunday that we've been talking about here? Um, I'm fantastic with kids. So bring your whole family. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Um, I think, you know, I, I see the whole, the whole family, um, kids included. So that's part of it. You know, I, I've got two little kids. I'm a, I'm a mom of two, obviously I've said that, but you know, I, I get the family part. I get the toothbrush battle. I get, <laughs> you know, I have to hold my, my little Evelyn down to brush her teeth at night. And you know, it's, I, I get it. I get all of that. So, um, Yeah. Yeah, I oh, think that cool. kind of helps too. How are you balancing all this right now? I mean, kids. <laughs> and, and, Good question. <laughs> yeah, building your own business while working. You know, it's like a full time. Yeah. Like, and, and somehow made time to come and hang out with me today. Yeah. yeah which thank you. Oh but, no, thank you. I'm so uh, happy to be here. Yeah, but how? How are you so, doing? So, um, first, my husband is incredible. Oh, ben gosh. is in, Ben is amazing. He is so supportive. Um, he helps out a lot. But I think. Honestly, 
I think part of it is I just have more energy than <laughs> the normal individual. <laughs> um, so I kind of my routine is I get up at four or four thirty every morning and exercise. Oh my god, um, <laughs> that <laughs> keeps me sane. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll go crazy. <laughs> um, so I do that, and you know, I just I have to work on the practice when the girls are sleeping. So that means getting up at four o'clock in the morning and getting my workout in so that I have the energy for the day and doing that and then working on it again when the girls go to bed. Cause I, I work in the clinic most days, um, you know, from eight to eight to four. And then I need to spend time with my family. Of it's course. necessary. So I have that, I have a routine when I come home from work, my cell phone stays in my bag for like two hours and I just have family time. So wow. if anyone tries to contact me, I probably won't pick up my phone cause I don't have it on me. And I, I give that time to my girls because I want to be present in their lives. And that kind of reinvigorates me too. Um, and then just making the most out of the time. I also, I eat super clean. Um, I just try to get as much energy out of my body as I can. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Wow. I drink a lot of coffee too. <laughs> How do you take your coffee? Like coffee with six shots of espresso? Um, honestly, no. Uh, <laughs> black coffee. Just That's black. how I take yeah, it. <laughs> black, black like my soul. No, That's but yeah. No, I, I think on a, a coffee note, I think good yes. coffee is supposed to be drank black. Like if you're putting like cream yeah. and sugar into it, like... And I read a I read a couple studies recently that black coffee prevents cavities. So I don't know how strong that evidence was, but I'm just gonna take it and run with <laughs> <Right>? it. <laughs> I'm not gonna question it. I'm just gonna take it and no, run with it. That, maybe that's why I've never had a cavity. There yeah. you go. Hey, nice. Yeah. You're doing something right. I actually so fun fact. It's like it's not like you were checking out my teeth today, but like I overbrushed, I flossed again. I was like, I love oh my to God, hear I'm, it. Hanging, I'm hanging out with the dentist. I gotta I love get to hear it. it. I was like, wait, but like I'm not going to the dentist area. Whatever Calm it takes. Down. Yeah, Whatever it yeah. takes. Um, I, so I have a business idea that I'm hoping one day, like a membership plan where like I could come in monthly or like every other week to just get a cleaning. <laughs> like, right. We I, could work something out. Eric. It's like, I, I've tried everything in the world from a consumer side to get my teeth to feel like it does after leaving the dentist. Yeah. And it does, it's just impossible. Yeah. It doesn't work. There's yeah. no way I've, I, every water pick and electric uh -huh. toothbrush and this soft and medium and it's like uh -huh. it, none of it and the fluoride it's like yeah. none of it it's like i have to go to the dentist yes you guys have the special touch that's right uh, glad to hear that <laughs> um let's go down all right let's talk about services so like yeah. you, you mentioned you're, you're you're a general dentist Correct. right yeah. yes all right so what are first off just what are the other dent types of dentist and yeah you know are there different services you do or won't you do will be offering or won't be offering? Yes. Yeah, so there are different specialists. So I'm a general dentist. Some dentists specialize in pediatrics, for example, that only see kids. Um, <clears throat> I see kids also, but um, there are specialists that just, just do that mm -hmm. with the more complicated cases. Um, there's endodontists who only do root canals. There are oral surgeons. There are pe uh, periodontists who treat like gum health and mm. bone below the gums. Um, so there's different specialties you can do. I wanted to stay with general dentistry because I like doing a variety of things. Okay. So I like doing root canals. I can do surgical extractions with bone grafting. Um, cosmetic dentistry, I'm getting really passionate about, um, like veneers, um, you know, things like that. I kind of like to do a little bit of everything. The one thing I will not ever do again is dentures. Oh my God. I hate dentures. Yeah. Full dentures. No one ever likes them. I'm terrible at dentures. I'm so bad at them that no one should get a denture from me, period. I <laughs> no will be the first to say that. <laughs> like, you, nope, nope, here, let me make a if recommendation. If you need full dentures, and... I will gladly refer you to someone else because no one deserves a denture made by Dr. Grothy. <laughs> so, what what about it, a denture that you just don't, it, like, what happens in that process? It's just, you know? it's so, you got to take a bunch of different impressions and the fit, and there's so many adjustments. And it's, people just, I think a lot of times, even though I try to warn patients about them, they think that they're going to get their normal teeth back and you just won't with a denture yeah. because there's no retention there unless you have an implant retained denture, meaning it hooks onto an implant that's in your bone. Otherwise it's just kind of floating around in your mouth and it's just so hard to get like that suction and it's just no, thank you. <laughs> Next please. <laughs> yeah. This sounds so, you just described it in a way that I just don't, I don't want to do them either. No, I don't, that's right. <laughs> Um, what's your favorite thing to do in dentistry? Oh my gosh. There's so many things. Um, I mean, my newest, my newest love is cosmetic dentistry. Okay. Um, it's, you have to be so meticulous and there's a lot of, 
I'm not trying to hate on any dentists here. I have just <laughs> Go learned. Go for it. It's a competition. I, no, yeah. <laughs> no. I think we're, we're all a team. We all have to support each other. Dentistry is hard. Um, I will say I have recently started on a, a continuing education pathway that is um, – a lot of extra work. I have to go fly to different places in the country. It's like a nine part series oh, wow. um, with multiple weekends. It'll end up being over, gosh, over like probably 120 hours of continuing education. Um, this is to just do, for the cosmetic stuff? Yes, oh just my for God. the cosmetic stuff. And okay. I started on that already. Um, and it looks at the functional part of cosmetic dentistry. So a lot of patients... I know if, if people have the idea that, you know, veneers just fall off, like veneers don't, aren't, aren't a great treatment plan, um, because you know, they'll fall off. They're not great. That's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And and patients are like, you know, just go for the full crown coverage because full crowns versus veneers because they'll stay on better. That's if I will say this, my patients will not have that problem because you have to take extra education and you have to be very, very meticulous about it and look at the whole mouth. Mm. That's how you get veneers that stay on and veneers that are beautiful and, and a great product is by being very, very meticulous and very, um, looking at the whole picture. Correct me if I'm wrong with veneers, you still have to shave the tooth down a bit, right? The difference with veneers. Yes, you do. It is much more conservative than crowns. So if a patient is um a good candidate for veneers it's preferred because it's much more conservative and i like to do the most conservative treatment possible okay i everybody on this spot that listens to my podcast knows i love asking devil's advocate questions yes if you're shaving my tooth down either a little bit or a lot like what at that point why like why would i care like you have to that's a great question so the less tooth structure we take away the better Right. It's healthier for the tooth. The less, it's just, I think, you know, the most minimally invasive treatment is better. The stronger, the more tooth you have there, the stronger the tooth. So, you know, taking away the least amount of tooth structure um, is just ideal because the tooth will be stronger. And then you'll have a longer, you know, stronger, healthier, longer lifestyle of that tooth. Love that. Yeah. Well, because I have been on a back and forth argument for years around getting veneers or not. Oh, sure. And everyone's like, I've had many dentists and like, I've talked to a couple cosmetic, cosmetic dentists, like specifically that's all they do. Mm-hmm. And they're like, your teeth shape and form are like ideal. Like people pay to have your teeth. I'm like, <laughs> but like, I'm like, but they're not the white I want. Yeah. I mean, and that's what it, that's what matters is if you like it or not. Right, like, and I don't care. Like I want the Hollywood white. Like I, I know it looks fake, I don't care. I love it. Like yeah. I want them like so freaking white. Um, but they're like, I don't want to like shave Ross it. from friends. Yeah, basically like, yeah, basically. But they're like, but we don't like they, I had one, like I'm not shaving your tooth. Like it is like people pay me to get yeah. your teeth. And I'm like, you know, then yeah. somebody like give me a yeah. solution. I don't know what to do here. So, uh, we can talk offline, but maybe yeah. you can help me out. Cause I was like, I, I, I want to do something. Sure. Um, you don't do, uh, like orthodontic stuff is totally separate thing, right? Like if that's another specialty. Thing. Yes, I do clear liners. So that's orthodontic treatment. I don't do complicated cases. Okay. I will definitely refer that to an orthodontist. But if there is um, a simpler, you know, less involved case, like just straightening the teeth, not, uh, not, you know, doing big bite adjustments. Okay. That like bite adjustments, I will send an orthodontist but yeah we we will offer clear aligners we'll cool. offer like um like the invisalign system yeah, yeah, yeah. um to to help with cosmetic issues absolutely there's a place for that uh, my wife's going she's doing the invisalign right now mm-hmm. as we speak and she has a love-hate relationship with yeah it. yeah it's a you know it's nice you don't have a metal mouth but it's just as many sure things it'll be worth it though for sure well and she, she really didn't need it. I was like, yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but um, her mom's um, an orthodontic assistant. Oh, so sure. We we got the family hookup on it. Nice. So I was like, yes, that thank helps. you. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, what what goes into? So you're opening your own place. You're not acquiring one. Like, Correct. what goes into building? Like, how do you get clients? Like, oh, how does that work? Like, do you have to like advertise like yeah I, how does that work? I don't, I, yeah you know funny enough one of the 
one of the big reasons that I decided not to pursue a career as a music artist (laughs) (laughs) was because I didn't want to like promote myself for a living. Well, here I am (laughs) promoting my dental office for a living. (laughs) Um, Some of it, I mean, the biggest thing is really grassroots marketing, just kind of getting involved in the community and getting the word out there. Um, So doing a lot of that, which is what, you know, part of my vision for the offices anyway, is being really involved in the community, giving back to the community. Um, So just kind of starting that now, volunteering um, and, and just getting involved and getting the word out there. My husband has been a great, um, great marketer for that. He is, <laughs> he's at all these like chamber of commerce events okay. and getting out there and, and networking. And he's, he's so social, he's like a social butterfly. So it's good for him anyway, but you know, just trying to get to know people and, and kind of talk. Just and know you're out there. Yeah. 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 So you got to, you've got to steal the clients. Yeah. You know? like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I also, I have to give you a shout out. Cause like one of the big things, like I get reached out to come on the podcast by a lot of businesses and companies, but like your social media is like just getting out there and like just sharing. I I think you do your Instagram so well because it's just like in a thought, like you're sharing just good information. I appreciate that. I have so much doubt when it comes to that. I'm like, this is, you know, keep doing it. Oh, thank you. I know. I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to that kind of stuff. (laughs) You're doing great. Trust me. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank Uh, you. You're providing valuable content and you're doing it consistently. Like, you you know, and it's like, maybe you're not seeing the numbers you want to see yet, but it'll get there and like, just keep doing what you're doing. It's so good. And it was like a big, big, like, okay. She like, I have had, I've had people like I do like a kind of like a pre interview with sure. and they just have like, no, like not that you have to have an opinion, but they don't have like any opinions or thoughts. Sure. They just like, I just do my job. And I'm like, like, do, like, do you even know what's going on in your yeah. industry or yeah. do you like stand for anything? Mm-hmm. Like, come on, give me something. Well, and you I know? feel like, like with dentistry too, it's kind of easy because there's so many different ways to do dentistry. And oh, I yeah. mean, you can go to 10 different dentists, get 10 different treatment plans and they can all be ethically correct. Like there's not one right way to do dentistry. Like I do dentistry differently than some other dentists. And that doesn't mean other dentists are wrong. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that I'm wrong. It just means that we have different approaches and, you know, there are patients that, you know, have different needs and wants and, you know, it's okay. That is a hundred percent. That is one of the things like the medical world has always blown my mind. Like Mm -hmm. there's more than one right answer. Absolutely. And it's just like, wait, but I just, I just want to be better. Like fix it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I've always been like, I'm very like black and white. It's either right or wrong. Sure. Or it's, you know, it's like, and I get there's a gray area, but I just yeah. like, I'm like, well, how, how? like, just yeah. give me the why, you know, it's like, well, there's, a, and I was like, well, it depends. I'm like, I hate that answer, but yeah. it's like, well, it's true. <laughs> yes. You know, um, I know you're like early on on your, in your career and all that, but if you, so far, is there anything you would have done differently? Good question. Honestly, no, I don't think so. I think so. I, I worked for two years in a corporate office. I won't say its name because I would never recommend anyone would go there. (laughs) Go to my LinkedIn page. (laughs) You'll figure it out. (laughs) Um, I worked there for two years. I was the only doctor in that office. It was eight operatories. It was an absolute sweatshop. I, and I was pregnant twice during that. So I had at any given time, four patients in the chair waiting on me like literally running around this office for two years. I, I honestly, looking back, I'm like, how the heck did I do that? How, I mean, it what, was uh, what makes it a corporate office? Like what's um, that, what does that even So mean? it wasn't this one, but like, for example, Aspen Dental. Ah, uh, so these bigger so, kind of like yes. chains. Like chains, things. yes, okay, okay. exactly. Got it. Um, that was a great learning experience because A, I had to learn to be fast. Right. And B, I had to figure stuff out on my own because I didn't have another dentist there to help me. And I started that job being a dentist with three months experience. Holy shit. Yeah. So I was there by myself. So patients would come in and I, the mentorship there was horrible. Like they said, you know, you can call this dentist. Who's your mentor anytime. Well, they didn't get cell phone reception in that office. So (laughs) actually I couldn't. Um, so I just had to figure stuff out. I had to, I had to figure it out and on my own and it was a really great learning experience for me. I will never go back to it. Hey, but you learned that. Yeah. yeah. I, so what not I, you, what you don't want to do. Yeah. So honestly, I don't think I would do anything differently. I've had a lot of tough experiences in my life where I've learned a lot from it, but I don't think I would change anything about it. 
And I think that's a valid point. I know that that's been an answer for a lot of people on this podcast, but I think sometimes some people, we just got to learn things the hard way. You oh, know? yeah. And it's just like, I've had a lot of experiences. And we don't like know, some, we need to know sometimes what we don't want to do or shouldn't mm-hmm. do. And it's like that, you know, until we experience it, sometimes that's just, you know, the way it is. Yes. Know? And some of that's clinical, but also I think a lot of it is like mental strength oh, and my resilience. God, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. Um, and I think some of that proves too that you can do this on your own. You're like, I, it's oh, like, yeah. well, I can do that. <laughs> you know, yes. it's like, I could do this. One yeah. experience I always draw from with that exact mindset is I studied abroad in France because I actually majored so cool. in French language in college. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was a double major. I majored in French do you language. Speak French. Oui, j'ai parlé français. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, I'm teaching my two year old French right now <laughs> um, <laughs> on the side. Because <laughs> um, you've got so much I, free time. Yeah, you know? right. But I majored in French and I was pre-dentistry. So I kind of double majored uh, at University of Iowa. And one of the experiences I draw on to kind of remind myself of what I can go through is I studied abroad in France. I lived there for five months. It was horrific. I had a host family that bullied me for what? five months. It was horrible. I, I got to a very, very dark place while I was there. But I made it through. So now whenever I have like a period of time, a season that's really hard. I literally think to myself, I made it through France. I can do this. That's unreal. So, oh my God. Yeah. I am, man, I am <laughs> like a heavy morning of emotions for you today. Oh my God. But I made uh, it through. You so here got we are. Through it. Um, on the, on the back note where you were talking about, like they were supposed to provide you a mentor. Have you had a mentor or somebody that oh you can gosh. shout out that was yes. like, gave you great advice? And I've all had that? several, I've had several mentors. So, um, there's a dentist, Dr. Steve Marsh in Cleveland, who mm. I met when I was in dental school. He has been a fantastic mentor. Um, not only with dentistry, he does a lot of cosmetic dentistry. So I've, I've tapped into his knowledge on that, but also just with how to treat people. Okay. He's wonderful. Um, he's been practicing for a long time. Um, so he's been great. I also got the idea of dentistry from my brother, um, who's five years older. He owns his own practice out in Colorado Okay, and he, got me into cosmetic dentistry as well. He is a phenomenal cosmetic dentist. I mean, the work he does is so impressive. Um, and he's a, a savvy businessman too. So, <laughs> um, yeah, with that. And then, um, you know, I've had a lot of influences in my life outside of dentistry too, that have really kind of shaped, um, you know, my, my tougher side and, and also just kind of helped me to get, get to where I am right now. So a lot on, of people to be grateful for. On the flip side, if somebody was going to become a dentist, what piece of advice would you give them? Okay, so I'll, I'll say that for a dentist and for a business owner. To become a dentist, um, I would say anyone who's looking to like apply to dental school is be as well-rounded as possible. So I I have always had to study really, really hard for school. Even in high school, like I would study on Friday and Saturday nights. Like oh, I, You were that kid. I was that kid. I had to be in <laughs> yeah. order to pass. Like I've never, school has never come easy to me. Okay. I have always had to study so, so hard. Like college, I didn't party. I studied all the time <laughs> like, For eight to survive. Years. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like so, um, but be as well-rounded as possible because like my test scores, my GPA was not the best. I really truly think that the reason I got into dental school was because I was well-rounded. I always worked. I've worked since I was like 13 years old. I've always had a job. Um, and my personal statement, my, my resume, I think, and that's what got me my, my job too, with that being the solo dentist in that office was my resume. Um, because I was well-rounded. So I would say try to be well-rounded to, and that will get you into dental school because they, they care more about that than just the plain test scores now from yeah. what I've heard. Man. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I would, I do not want to be going through school right now. That is just, no. <laughs> uh, and then you, you had, uh, some advice for somebody who was going to be a business owner. Yeah. I would say from my <laughs> very short stint as a business owner so far is do your research do your education. I have, you know, there's a lot that, that goes into it, especially to own a dental office, like any other, you know, small business is just do your research, ask questions, you know, be as prepared as possible for every step of the way. Have you had any surprises yet? 
Honestly, no, because I feel like I've listened. I've listened to so many podcasts. I've read so many books. I've like done so much like CE for owning a business as a dentist. So I really haven't yet. I know there will be some, but no, not of so course. far. Knock on wood, you <laughs> yeah. know. And plus, it sounds like you've got a brother that's kind of been there, done that a little bit too, right? Yeah, he's yeah. given me a couple tips, but just I've honestly, few. yeah, I've just done so much research Good on for this you. whole process. Yeah, I mean, research, 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 but keep an open mind because there's, I feel like, you know, I've been through that route twice and it's just like, yeah. as much as you think, you know, re- you're ready for it. There's always something that's going to end up a- catching yeah. you off guard. Absolutely. But, um, and sometimes it's a good, good thing, you know, mm-hmm. too. So not to come off with a negative connotation there. Yeah. But, um, have you set any goals or a, a, a line would be saying that your practice is a success, like that you're hoping to reach? And what does that look like? I mean, I have, I have a very detailed spreadsheet for, <laughs> for <laughs> yes, like, <laughs> charts, graphs, yes, uh, for like the actual, you know, quantitative business side. Yeah. I think I will feel the success in that I have a happy staff mm. that wants to come to work and it's a very positive environment. And I think having, you know, happy patients, I mean, that's, that's really what it comes down to is just having that feel that my staff wants to come to work. And they enjoy each other and enjoy, you know, working in my office and and just having patients that feel like they found a dental home and and want to come to see us. Yeah, love that. Yeah. Yeah. You'll you'll feel it. There's always I would say that every business owner has that moment of like I almost want to say like I've made it, mm-hmm. but like you know, and it's not, and it not, it's not always quantitative, right? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm making a million dollars. I have 10,000 patients, whatever that is. That's not always the case. Yeah. I mean, trust me, all, we all want to make money at the end sure. of the day. But, you know, the, the fact that like, whether it's the certain, like r- some people it's, you know, it's triggered by like a certain review or a customer tells a story or, yes. you know, it's like, or you've been around so long that now the parents are bringing the kids, you know, kind yes. of thing. And it just, again, it depends on your business, but yeah. there's always that moment of just like, shit you know mm-hmm. I, you know country singer looks out and sees thirty thousand people in the right. stands you know <laughs> um do you still sing or do anything with that um yeah, i did i did more before i moved like i'll sing at church stuff okay. like that but yeah. i miss it a lot truthfully then don't give it up find some find an outlet it's hard man yeah, yeah well you're doing everything else yeah. why don't i throw <laughs> that in the mix all right i sing in my car does that count <laughs> That's that's a, that's something. Yes. Uh, Got to do it something. Yeah. Um. Well, very cool. Um. So you're opening not until December. Is mm-hmm. there like if somebody was interested in talking with meeting with you or signing yeah. up? Like, is it uh, like December? Like, that's like, th- can you sign up now for that date? Absolutely. Or is like yeah, a- we're pre-booking now. So we've, okay, we've got a little list started, which is oh, really oh. exciting. Heck yeah. Um. So people can either go to our website, which is rootdental.net. Um, or, you know, just call me. My number is 224-333-2063. Wow. Putting the number out there yeah. too. And I'm actually shocked you were able to get that web address. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I yeah. would have figured. Well, I got it. <laughs> I got it like before I even decided to build the office. Like I was like, well, just in case I'm going to get this. <laughs> well, it, what, it, I think it's like you could pay like 50 bucks for like three years yeah, or something seriously. like that. But I was just, I'm just shocked it was available. Yeah. That was like root dental. Like yeah, that seems such like a obvious combination that it was just like okay but no, yeah. no, okay well mm-hmm. good for you yeah Thanks. um all right so we're gonna wrap up here we had uh we had pulled our listeners yes. there's some hot take questions around mm-hmm. what your thoughts are in the world of dentist dentistry dentistry right yeah, yeah. um or just like teeth care in general right mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> we got this one a lot and this was our, by far our number one question or, you know, what's your take on fluoride? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Great question. Um, my opinion has, I think, okay, so I'm going to say this first in science, things are always changing. So I think it's important to stay current with, you know, news and studies that are coming out and yeah. opinions can change. And that's just the nature of science. Right now, my opinion is I am not anti-fluoride. Okay. What I tell parents, especially of kids, is treat fluoride toothpaste like it's medicine because it is medicine. Right. Um, the dose makes the poison. Mm. So, you know, for kids, put the amount of toothpaste should be like the size of a grain of rice. That's it. 
because yeah, Florida commercials dis- make us think so much. Otherwise. Yeah, no. So it's, you know, I give my, my daughter, my two year old Evelyn, she has fluoride toothpaste. We put a very small amount. Um, but I will say that, you know, I'm doing research on like non- nano hydroxy appetite. No, I'm not doing research. I'm looking up, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to stay current with that. Um, but I also think that, you know, fluoride is okay, in my opinion, from what I've found in moderation. That being said, if someone's nervous about fluoride, don't use it. You don't have to use it. But look at your diet because fluoride is used to remineralize tooth. If you don't if you don't break down tooth structure with a poor diet, then essentially, I mean, you don't really need it, right? So if you don't want to use fluoride, clean up your diet. Don't have acidic beverages. Don't you know, eat junk food, you but know, don't they put fluoride in our water. They do. But the amount of fluoride that causes negative effects is above 1.5 parts per million in water. And look at your water. I mean, every community I know in Cary, the, the water fluoridation is between 0.5 and 0.7 parts per million. Mm-hmm. So that is far below what is unhealthy. Okay. But so then look if at you do, but all right, because I'm always the devil's advocate. Yes, absolutely. But it's like if I, I do, it's in my toothpaste, it's in my food, mm-hmm. it's in my water. Like obviously, then that starts to aggregate, right? Yeah. Like, th- I guess you know, there's no good answer or there's no final answer. That's why it's the great the great debate. Yeah, right? absolutely, but, absolutely. Um, so I would say you know, check your water fluoride levels in your community. Um, you know, be conservative with the amount of toothpaste you use. If you're nervous about it, switch to anti fluoride toothpaste. I don't. Personally, for okay. me and my family, we use it. Um, but I think everyone has their own needs and it's it's different. And also, it's still backed by the ADA. So I'm not going to disagree with it. Um, but there are new studies coming out about nanohydroxyapatite, which has, yes. I guess, been used in Japan for 50 years or so. And they've they've had good experience with that. Um, again, it's not backed by the ADA. So I'm not going to, you know, argue for it. But they're, you know there are different things to try out there. There are different ways to approach it. So you got to do what's best for you and your family. So at the end of the day, if I choose, like if I try to cut fluoride though, Mm -hmm. like you don't think there's any, like that's not a bad thing necessarily. Um, I think it's bad if your teeth are decaying. Got it. So if you, if you don't want to use fluoride, look to other ways to maintain healthy teeth, which is looking at your diet Auditing your diet and, you know. Is it vitamin D, calcium? Like, is that that stuff that really helps strengthen the teeth? Or yeah. Is it, yeah, there's a lot of right? it. Yep, yep. Oh. Calcium, casein, and, and cow's milk um, is kind of like an, another version of fluoride because it remineralizes the teeth. So. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So this one, actually, I've seen trending a lot on TikTok, ironically, Ooh, and people go. talking about it. Um, is there really any difference between any of the toothpastes? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so Sensodyne and Crest, I'll give that example. Okay. Um, both have fluoride, but Crest is a lot more abrasive than Sensodyne. So over time it can kind of abrade the, the tooth structure. It's a lot, it's a lot more aggressive. Okay. Um, so the fluoride content is probably the same in a lot of them. Um, but there is, there is differences. And I know like whitening toothpaste, I was reading a study, um, about like the different, different effects of whitening in all these whitening toothpaste. So there is a difference. What do you use? I use Sensodyne extra whitening. <laughs> <laughs> Sensodyne reach out to me for, <laughs> Baby, no, just kidding. <laughs> sponsored opportunity yeah, right there. I am not sponsored by Sensodyne. <laughs> uh, but we're trying to get this podcast sponsored by Sensodyne. So if you're That's listening, right. Sensodyne, <laughs> yeah, uh, right. feel free to reach out. Um, but okay. So does the charcoal part, like all these like charcoal claims. Oh, do don't you- use charcoal. Don't do it. Like, It'll break down your tooth structure. No shit. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> it's it's super abrasive. Uh, I would not recommend. What about the... Uh, I'm just rabbit holing. Yes, the, please. Uh, there's like the, the... They're talking about like the, the purple like wipes out the yellow thing. You know what yeah, I'm talking about? I, I did. I looked that up and in actual like clinical trials, it, it doesn't work. Okay. So yeah. if it makes you brush your teeth more, I think great. Yeah, and there's that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. What is the actual best white tooth whitening? What is the best and what is the, I know. And then there's going to be the asterisk of like, what's the safest, right? Like, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, crest is okay. The strips you're talking about? The strips are okay. Yeah. The strips are okay. They make people's teeth, myself included, super sensitive. Okay. Um, so that doesn't 
necessarily hurt the teeth, but it will make them super sensitive. Mm. Um, I, when I want to whiten my teeth, I will use like Crest white strips <laughs> and the Sensodyne <laughs> because they make my teeth super sensitive. Okay. Um, that's just what I use. There's not a, her teeth are huge. super white by the way. People. Oh, thank Sorry you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's what I use. Um, but you know, we, we also will offer in office whitening too. So a lot of dentists do in office whitening that that will be less sensitive for your teeth when okay. you get it done professionally. Is so. that like, I'm, I'm throwing a brand out there, but kind of like the zoom whitening where they use the, yeah, like, that the is light, a brand of it. The, yeah. You know, the lights and stuff like that. So it, the light has not actually been clinically proven to help. Oh really? Yes. Okay. That's the UV activation. Yes. That doesn't, yeah. that doesn't do anything. It goes well, back it to that purple thing. I that's think, like right? marketing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well. Really good marketing, but no, the light does not actually help, but in office whitening is, so the way that we'll do it is like, if someone wants to come in and, and do professional whitening, what I recommend and what we do is the patient does take home trays for three weeks Oh shit. and then, you know, every night and then they come in and do the in office whitening and then they can, if they want to do like an extra week of at home. But that's what has shown to be the most effective is like at home and then in office. So the combination of the two. Okay. That, that, that's intense. Like I'm, I was like looking for like one and done. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Unfortunately nope, no. the, with dentistry, that doesn't really nah, happen. That often. Damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Very, Cause I'm all about tooth whitening. I want these bad boys white. I'm well, I have some on. tips for you. Oh, let's when go. When you drink em. coffee, double fist it, water and coffee. Take a sip of water after you take a sip of coffee. That helps prevent the stains from sticking. That, so coffee stains is like a real thing? Like, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I, I've read like that's a bunch of like myth. Like, no, that's thing. a real thing. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like, or with do the same thing with red wine, God, blueberries, all I that. Drink. Yeah. I go um, from coffee so, until four yeah, and then they switch to <laughs> white switch red over. wine. It's like, that sounds oh, great. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's like one of my tips is do that. Um, don't brush right after you drink coffee or wine. Wait like 30 minutes. Because if you brush right afterwards, you're basically like pushing the stains into your teeth. I heard that's also true with like immediately after eating, like the food can actually act as an abrasive too. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. So I'm not Spot crazy. On. Wow. You're, huh? so, yeah. you're so knowledgeable. See, I like my teeth. Yeah, I'm going to care. I love it. Um, so I will skip that. This one's about like insurance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've beaten that. How does, how does, what's the, de- the debate around dental insurance <laughs> and the impact of care? Like, yeah, that horse is dead and yeah. we poked it a couple <laughs> yeah. times. Um, you alluded to this very, very early on in the conversation, but like the diet or just lifestyle influences into dental health. Mm -hmm. And the one that you like, like glazed right over that I meant to stop you on was like how sleep apnea and cracked teeth. Yes. Like what? Oh, that's becoming so much more prevalent in dentistry. So there are a lot, and this is part of the reason why I'm so passionate about holistic and comprehensive care is because the mouth is a window. It's a mirror for the rest of the body. So okay. there are a lot of things that show up in the mouth. There's, you can see diabetes, heart disease, um, you know, immune, immune health, everything shows up in the mouth. It's all connected. So some people, you know, think of your mouth as being just a, a different part of the body, but it's all connected. So for example, signs of sleep apnea, and especially in kids, we're seeing it a lot. So if a kid is bedwetting, if a kid, um, is snoring, grinding their teeth, they've mm-hmm. got like, um, wear facets, we call them like flat spots on their teeth. If they have a narrow arch, these are all signs of sleep apnea. Um, so even adults like grinding teeth, cracked teeth, that can be a sign of sleep disturbances as well, airway obstruction, things like that. So I do not diagnose sleep apnea as a dentist. However, I do look for the signs and refer. Refer it over. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's, do you have any like not so common like just tips or tricks or things that like, people are doing often that shouldn't or like just things about general mouth care that you would love to Mm -hmm. drop some hot information on here one of the most one of the tips that i've gotten the most positive feedback on actually is like rinsing and spitting after you brush so when you brush your teeth you should do that you should not rinse and spit. okay yeah yeah that's my that was my understanding Yeah, yeah, yeah we should not rinse and spit which i grew up doing that um so just spit don't rinse um, it's like gets rid of like the kind of this coating, right? Yeah. That you the, want that toothpaste to stay on there, that right. fluoride to sink in. The other thing, um, when we floss, we need to floss. I love <laughs> flossing. Get... <laughs> Are you lying to me? No. As my wife, I do it okay. all the time. <laughs> I also do use the water pick thing though. That's too. good too. Yeah. I actually like that. It, there, I don't know, but there's a satisfaction of actual flossing that I Absolutely. just like, love. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's good for your heart. And actually. Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. It decreases systemic inflammation when you floss, which directly impacts your risk for heart disease. 
Also, if you read Peter Atia's book, Outlive, which is one of my favorite books of all time, highly recommend. Okay. He talks about how flossing actually decreases your risk of cancer. No shit. Yeah. Cancer is um, an inflammatory disease, right? So the cancer cells are living in our body and the cancer cells are awakened by inflammation. Mm -hmm. So when you decrease inflammation in your mouth by flossing, you're decreasing systemic inflammation. And that in turn can decrease your risk for cancer. Okay, I, I can follow yeah. that. I guess I'm following. And he's an, right. he's an oncologist. Um, Dang, he's okay. a very well known, uh, very well respected oncologist. In very cool. So outlived by Peter D- Peter Atia, I'd highly recommend. All right, another question from our listeners: Your take on electric toothbrushes versus manual? Great question. Um, I say however you brush <laughs> brush <laughs> um i was using a manual toothbrush for several years and actually i just switched to an electric toothbrush oh. I, so i used an electric toothbrush then switched to manual and then switched back to electric because i was feeling some sensitivity in my teeth and noticed that i was getting gum recession and i think that was from my manual toothbrush really? so the thing about the electric toothbrush is you can um it makes you more gentle with your brushing so gum recession can happen when you brush too hard like i was doing because i can be a little aggressive <laughs> um you and then, no way, <laughs> no CD. Get out, come That's on, right. get it. That's right. <laughs> um, so that can help with gum recession because it it buzzes at you when you brush too hard. Um, the thing with with it an do- electric really? toothbrush, yeah. Know. And the thing with both of them is technique matters. So when you use an electric toothbrush, let the electric toothbrush do the ju- do the work. Um, just kind of let it glide over your teeth. With manual, mm. you want to be a little more a little more technique sensitive. So, um, the only thing I always so I actually hate an electric toothbrush. Yeah, I. I feel like I do a better job. Yeah. But the only thing I liked about the electric toothbrush, like it would would, like the time part. So like I would have it where like, I know how long I've been like, I've been with a manual brush and it could have been like, like five seconds went by, but my brain was just so disconnected. It was like, wait, I actually didn't do anything. You know, kind of thing. Yep. That was, um, but also the cost of an electric toothbrush. Cause I I love switching out my toothbrush. Like, like I buy them bulk. Okay. (laughs) Like I'm like, I'm switching that bad boy out often. I love it. Um, Okay, so I have one. I have a question that I yeah. want to ask: uh, soft versus medium br- bristle. Soft every time. God, I hate that. Don't <laughs> I, no. It's too soft. I'm so sorry. Soft it's every too time. Soft. Yes. <laughs> God, I actually when um when the hard was still around, I mm-hmm. actually and I knew they were discontinuing it. Oh, I your poor st- gums. I hey, ask ask any of my dentists. I have great gums and they <laughs> love them. It's probably because you floss. Yeah. Well, they all, they're always shocked on uh, when they do the, like they measure. Yeah. Like, they gu- Periodontal the, charting. Yeah. Yes. They're like, yours is so impressive. And That's I'm like, wonderful. Like, nice work. Keep it up. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah I'm <laughs> pressing in a dentist here. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> um, well, cool. See, I told you the hour was going to, we're actually over an hour. So I told you it was going to fly love by. It. Sorry, uh, I'm so chatty. <laughs> oh my God, don't be. I love this. I, I told you I could talk about this stuff all day. Yeah. Um, was there anything you were hoping to, you know, shout out, talk about that we didn't today? I don't think so. I mean, yeah, this has been so fun. I love chatting about dentistry or really anything. So I would yeah, love this to has been great. Um, bring you back on after you open and oh, just see you know, how, how things are going. We'll do like a yes. one year update kind of thing I or think something. We yeah. That'd be fun. Um, so the, your website's rootdental.net, yes. correct? Yes, and uh, on, we're on Instagram at go root dental. Oh my God, please, you guys, we'll we'll tag this, but like Aww, check her Instagram out. Like, thank you. Even if like Algonquin doesn't work for you, just the information knowledge she's dropping on you guys, it's so good. Well, it's I try so to good. I try to think about you know what what do people I want it to benefit others, like and make it less about myself, and you know I. I put a lot of videos of like me talking on there, but like I want it to hopefully educate and benefit others. And I mean, honestly, know, I think that gives some like credibility to you. Some it's of like, it's kind of boring just, probably, but I'm like, I mean, at the end of the day, know, it is dentistry yeah, stuff, you know, but like at the same time, like it's still good info, you yeah, know? Yeah. Well, thank um, you. I appreciate that. And you just, ha- you just did like an interesting post too. It was, um, you sat down and talked with somebody who oh, did. Oh, uh, I'm really excited about this. Yeah, it's called Beyond the Brush. Okay. Is this new series I'm starting. Yeah. And that's part of my like holistic and comprehensive care kind of passion is it's like a side passion project is talking with other local healthcare minded professionals and providers. So I just talked with Aubrey from Main Hair Boutique. She's so fun. And she um, she owns a hair salon, but she also is really passionate about holistic health as well. And like um, how you know, health 
health shows up in your hair and, and things mm-hmm. that we can do. So I'm, I'll be talking to other, hopefully other, um, health minded professionals to just talk about systemic health and, and Love everything. That. I think it's yeah. such a cool idea. And I like that yeah. beyond the brush. I like yeah. that. Um, <laughs> and is it, Oh, those will be a post on Instagram or YouTube. Where does those Instagram? Instagram? Yeah. yeah. And I'll probably put them on Facebook too. I'm starting to Facebook's hard. It confuses me. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, honestly, you, you, uh, pro tip, you'll need a Facebook though. I do have it. So yeah, you can look yeah, for us on there too. <laughs> they're on Facebook too. So December 26th, grand yes, opening, right? Yes. And pre booking right. is now. So cool. I'm going to go sign up. Um, well, cool. Well, thank you for coming on today. Yes. Thank you for having me. It was uh, so fun. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and thank you to our listeners. Um, that wraps up another week of small business, big dreams. You guys know the deal. Like share comment. We support local. We shop local. And then I'll have all of Maggie's info tagged, commented, posted, and all the stuff. You guys know the deal. But until next time, goodbye for now. And that wraps up another episode of Small Business Big Dreams. Thank you for joining us. Please support us and these incredible small businesses by sharing this podcast with friends, family, and on your social networks. Spreading the word not just helps us grow, but more importantly, supports the dreams of our local entrepreneurs. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform. But if you have a small business we should hear about, reach out to us on social media or our website. We'd love to hear from you. Until next week, I'm your host, Eric Bull. Keep supporting small businesses and goodbye for now.